Um, here we have Bitcoin futures open interest. So, so this is the open interest denominated in Bitcoin. So if you're looking at this chart in denominated in dollars, it looks a lot like the price chart um, with you know a little bit above and below. But when you're looking at it in Bitcoin terms, it can kind of give you a sense of, of how much uh, leverage is in the system, how much, you know, how, how significant the derivatives market is as, as a percentage of, of the total supply. And so the larger that this gets, the more, um, you know, I wouldn't say unstable, but the more, the more that the derivative market is, is a driver of, of price here. So what we're seeing now is, um, you know, at 57K, here we are in, you know, the early, early uh, weeks of October and, and the futures market is, is really, the, it's, it's pretty muted in terms of, you know, overall open interest in Bitcoin terms. And so th this is just kind of another one of these things telling us that spot market is driving the price. Um, is you know, derivatives are not the leading cause of this, this recent price action over the last couple of months. Um, and it's really just, you know, showing that we're, we're in a, you know, quite a healthy place here. You can see how the market topped right when the, you know, the futures open interest topped. Um, and you can also see, you know, in July, when you have that massive short squeeze from the bottom at 30K, um, you know, the open interest also kind of spiked. So that's, you know, both the long and short side of things. And here we are with, with the open interest, you know, below 340,000 Bitcoin, uh, really healthy spot in the market. And I think, um, you know, we should be encouraged by seeing this. Um, and so this is kind of another one of these, these metrics um, in terms of, you know, open interest. We have, we have, there's two types of kind of collateral you can use in the Bitcoin derivatives market. And it's, it's not something that's, that's broadly understood pretty well, but um, it's, it's quite significant in terms of Bitcoin price action. So this is a percentage of the, the futures open interest. Just to go back here, this is what we're looking at in terms of overall open interest, you know, right around 330,000 Bitcoin at the moment, um, pretty, pretty, uh, you know, healthy levels. And this is the percentage of the open interest uh, that's Bitcoin denominated versus stablecoin denominated. And so what we can see here is that the Bitcoin margin open interest has, has fallen from 70% all the way down to around 45% or 46% today. And so what does that mean? Is that bullish or bearish? Uh, what are the implications? So uh, when you're using Bitcoin margin, so if I'm, if I'm leveraged long Bitcoin with Bitcoin, uh, that's, that's um, you know, it's not the best to use because when the price of Bitcoin falls, not only is your position losing value, but your underlying collateral is, is losing value in tandem. So you're actually, uh, your liquidation price, the price that you, you lose everything continues to increase as the price falls. There's a convexity there that's, that's not advantageous for, for bulls. And so um, you, can, you, you, you don't see this relationship with stables, uh, stable coins. It's much more of a linear relationship. Your, your position is drawing down uh, in the derivatives market, but your collateral is, is staying that, in that same value because you're using uh, stable coins for margin. Um, and so conversely, actually, when, when you're short with stable coins, the opposite of being long with Bitcoin, you see this, the same relationship, but uh, to the upside. So if you're short Bitcoin using stable coins as collateral, uh, which, which happens a lot in this market, surprisingly enough, uh, as the price of Bitcoin creeps up, your collateral is worth less and less and less compared to what you actually have to cover, what you have to, to uh, buy back in uh, because you shorted. And so that this this kind of the lower the, this metric goes, you know, Bitcoin margin uh, percent of open interest, the, the more we'll see explosive short squeezes, and the less we'll see these these huge long liquidations like we saw, uh, you know, in the middle of the year. And so this is another encouraging development on the derivative side of things. Um, you know, it's not the most simple metric, but there's a lot of there's a lot of alpha here um, in terms of you know what's going to happen in the future in, in derivatives. Um, Sam, you want to take the, the hash rate? Yeah, sure. Totally. Uh, I think this for me is one of the most bullish narratives on the year. Like if I'm going to put a narrative on 2021 for, for Bitcoin is definitely the resilience of the network when it comes to the China exodus this year and where hash rate went, um, recovering over, you know, close to 80% in just a few months time. Um, and we're only expecting that to, to go even further. I think uh, Luxure just came out with their hash rate index report today, and, and they're predicting a 185 exahash by the end of the year. Um, everything that we're seeing from publicly traded miners coming out is everyone's ramping up production uh, through 2022 in a massive way. And for you know the security and for the resilience of the network, this for me is, is definitely uh, I don't say maybe as bullish as some of the spot conviction that we're seeing, but just as important as for the long-term uh, macro network where we're thinking about it, you know, five, 10 years time, I think the network's going to have to face a lot of different stress tests. And this is one of the, the biggest stress tests today that the uh, network faced. I mean, the biggest country in the world, uh, you know, 
banned Bitcoin and, you know, the network kept on chugging. So, <laughs> you know, if you think you can stop Bitcoin, well, uh, I think you're being proven wrong, uh, you know, every second of the day. So, yeah, it's a giga bullish for, for Bitcoin and the network.